At this point, we've spent a decent amount of time discussing determinants, and they're not super easy to calculate, so it would be nice to know if there are some useful properties of determinants. In particular, we might ask if there's any relationship between the determinant of a matrix and that matrix times a scalar, or the determinant of two matrices and the determinant of their sum, or their product. In this video, we'll look at these situations and see some surprising and perhaps not so surprising results. We previously discussed how elementary row operations affect the determinant of a matrix. So hopefully you already know, if we multiply a row of a matrix by a scalar, that has the effect of multiplying the determinant by that same scalar. Thus, if we multiply all of the rows by that scalar, that will have the effect of multiplying the determinant by that scalar to the power of the number of rows, which in this example is 3, but in general we might say is n. So if A is an n by n matrix, then when we multiply it by a scalar k, the determinant of the resulting matrix is just k to the n, that's k to the number of rows, multiplied by the determinant of the matrix. For example, if we have the determinant of this matrix, but then we take every row and multiply it by k, well, the effect will be to just multiply the determinant by k to the 3. There's three rows, so three factors of k. Another way to think of this is that scalars can be taken out of the determinant. However, they're taken out of each individual row or column. So I could take a k out of the first row, a k out of the second row, and a k out of the third row, and that would give me k cubed. It is perhaps not surprising that there's not such an easy relationship between the determinant of two matrices and the determinant of their sum. In general, the determinant of a plus b is certainly not equal to the sum of their determinants. For example, here are two 2x2 two two matrices. The determinant of this one is 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. The determinant of this one is 0 minus 1, so negative 1. Their sum is seen here, and the determinant of their sum is 6 minus 12, which is negative 6. So we see the sum of their determinants was negative 3. That's not equal to the determinant of the sum of the matrices. However, there is an interesting relationship that exists in a special case. This isn't as simple as the determinant of a sum of matrices being the sum of the determinants, but if we have two matrices that differ only in a single row or in a single column, then there is a nice relationship. So here are two matrices, A and B, and you can see that they differ only in row two. Their first rows are identical, but they differ in row two. Now let's consider what the sum of the determinants of these two matrices would be. The determinant of matrix A is A11 times A22 minus A12 times A21. The determinant of matrix B is A11 times B22 minus A12 times B21. And then we could collect the A11 terms, so that would be A11 times A22 plus B22. And then we could collect the A12 terms, so that would be minus A12 times A21 plus B21. They each have a negative, you see, so we take that out, and thus it's addition in the parentheses. And if you look at this, this actually just looks like another determinant. In fact, it's the determinant of the matrix that comes from taking either of these matrices in the first row, but then adding the row where they differ. So you can see the first row of this matrix is the first row of A and B, but the second row is the sum of this second row where the matrices differ. And the determinant of this matrix is in fact the sum of the determinants of the original matrices A and B. The determinant of this matrix is A11 times A22 plus B22, which we see there, minus A12 times A21 plus B21, which we see there. Here that conclusion is written out, the determinant of this matrix A plus the determinant of this matrix B equals the determinant of the matrix that results from taking their common row and then 
adding together the entries in the row where they differ. Here's the statement of the result in general and an example with 3x3 three three matrices. Let A, B, and C be n by n matrices that differ only in row I and assume that row I of matrix C can be obtained by adding corresponding entries in the ith rows of A and B. So in terms of the previous example, here's A, here's B, and this matrix that came from adding up the row where they differ, that's matrix C. So in this situation, the determinant of that matrix C is equal to the sum of the determinants of the original matrices A and B. And the same thing holds for columns. So they could differ in a single row, or they could differ in a single column. And here is an example. You can see that these two matrices on the right differ only in the third row. Now we can create this other matrix by matching their first two rows, but then adding together that row where they differ. 3 plus 2 is 5, 0 plus 1 is 1, and 1 plus 3 is 4. So the determinant of this matrix should equal the sum of the determinants of these other matrices. Let's go ahead and calculate these determinants just to check using the diagonal trick. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson going over this trick, but maybe you'll get the hang of it here if you've never seen it before. So here are the matrices. I've just taken their first two columns and rewritten them to the right because that just helps us do the computation. Multiply along these rightward diagonals and add those products together. This diagonal has a product of 0. 1 times 3 times 5 is 15, and 5 times 2 times 1 is 10, so 15 plus 10. And then we'll subtract the sum of the products of the diagonals in the opposite direction. The first one is 0, the next one is 3, the next one is 8. So this would just be minus 3 plus 8. So 15 plus 10 is 25, and then minus 11, and so this is equal to 14. That's the determinant of this matrix C. All right, let's quickly do the next one. This diagonal is a product of 0. This one is 9. This next one is also 0. So then we'll just subtract the sum of the products of the diagonals in the other direction. This one's 0, this one is 0, and this one is 2. So 9 minus 2, so this is 7. Now the determinant of this matrix should equal the sum of the determinants of these other two. This one had a determinant of 7, so this one down here should also be 7, so that their sum is 14. Let's calculate it and check. This diagonal has a product of 0, this diagonal has a product of 6, and this diagonal has a product of 10. Then we will subtract the sum of the diagonals in the other direction. That's 0, that is 3, and that is 6. In total, this is 16 minus 9, which is indeed 7. We can see the result works. So the determinant of this matrix, which resulted from just taking these two matrices in the first two rows and then adding the rows where they differ, the, deter the determinant of this is just the sum of the determinants of those individual matrices. Pretty neat. Finally, we can consider multiplication, and perhaps this is the most surprising result. Given how complicated the formulas for matrix multiplication and determinants are, we wouldn't really expect many of these formulas to be super nice. We saw addition didn't work out so well, but multiplication absolutely does. If A and B are n by n matrices, which is to say they're square matrices of the same size, then the determinant of their product is simply the product of their determinants. We will take some time to prove this in following lessons, but for this one, let's just see an example. Here are two matrices, A and B, and you can check that this is their product. Let's calculate the determinants. The determinant of matrix A is 3 minus 2, so 1. The determinant of matrix B is negative 8 minus 15, so negative 23. Okay, so the determinant of their product then should be just the product of those determinants, negative 23. Let's check. 2 times 14 is 28, and then minus 17 times 3, 17 times 3 is 51, so 28 minus 51, and wouldn't you know it, that's negative 
23. All these properties will at times make it a little easier to work with determinants, and certainly serve us well in some proofs, we will continue to see some of the nice uses of determinants. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my Linear Algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos and access to these lecture notes if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.